Hey everyone, so today we've got a quick video for you covering the installation process of our plug and play fuel pump kits. We offer these for both the 10th generation and 11th generation Honda Civics. And we do have an install guide on the website, but we still regularly get a lot of questions pertaining to not necessarily getting the fuel pump assembly out of the car, but putting our fuel pump into the top hat assembly. So I figured uh, we would put together a quick little video that kind of goes through this process. The top hats and these uh, fuel pump assemblies between 10th and 11th generations are different, but the installation process is the same. Really the only thing that differs is the wire routing um, and it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so starting off what comes in the kit. Obviously, the fuel pump. This is an AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pump. It's rated for E85 as well. So basically any pump fuel you're gonna come across, this thing will handle it just fine. And then the other thing that comes in the packaging is everything else you'll need. So O-rings for the fuel pump, our plug and play harness, and the filter that attaches to the bottom of the fuel pump as well as this little clip for the evap line we found that these things are pretty prone to breaking uh, when getting the top hat assembly out of the car so we include one in the kit just so you don't have to run to the auto parts store after yours breaks so that's everything for the kit as far as tools go um, really the only things that you'll need are some flatheads and uh, pliers. I find that needle nose work really well. Moving on to the install process. So we're going to take our top hat assembly and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to disconnect our connectors. They are not the same. Uh, they both only go in the correct locations. You don't got to worry about marking them or anything. Um, I would recommend taking a picture of how the wires are routed uh, just so they go back the way that you found them. So we're going to squeeze the little tab on the outside here, pull that out, do the same thing for the other one, that pulls straight out. There is a retaining clip on the bottom of the top hat. We'll get our wires out from that. And then from there, we have the fuel pump wiring itself free. Uh, and these other wires are for the level sensor, so we still want to get them kind of out of the way. So we're going to get those off of those clips. That's good and out of the way. Now we're going to remove the top hat assembly. So if you look at this one rod that has the spring on it, you'll see that there is a small snap ring on it. So we're going to grab that snap ring with our pliers and push down a little bit and make sure that the opened end is kind of facing towards the fuel pump and it will pull straight out. And set that aside and then once that is off this top hat will physically lift up. That spring is going to pop out. Don't really worry about that. And then from there, the other side is uh, kind of just along for the ride. So that'll all just pull out. You don't need to worry about disconnecting the hose. Um, it's, uh, it's a uh, shrink fit connection, so you can't really pull it off. If you pull it off, it's, it's non-reusable. So don't take that off. From here, we're going to take one. Um, Sometimes two, having a, a second flathead helps a little bit, but uh, there's gonna be three clips that hold this fuel pump module into the bucket. So we've got one, two, and three. And basically all we're gonna do is get under there with our flathead, pop up, twist it, and sometimes these don't really move. You need to get it kind of up a little bit so it stays popped. So you can see it's not flush anymore. I've got it popped up. So we're going to do that at all three 
locations. I like to do the long ones first. Um, they generally will stay up a little better than the one short one over here. So we'll do that one last. And then once that's up, the whole fuel pump module will come right out. And it also, again, it has these hoses on it, so it's not going to go very far, um, but it doesn't need to. So once we've got that out, we're going to take off the factory filter. Um, this is kind of where you want that second flathead because this one's a little more finicky than, than getting the, uh, the pump module out of the bucket. So again, uh, we're just going to pry up and get it over that lip. And sometimes you might need to leave a screwdriver in one of these locations because um, it'll kind of, you'll get one up and then you'll go to get do another and the, the one you just did will pop back down. So it kind of helps to have multiple. So that's two and then we got a third one over here. See, just like that, it, it popped that second one back down. Okay, so that's all three of them popped. And then from there, we're going to pull out on the fuel pump filter, and that will take the pump with it. Be careful that you don't lose this spacer. You will need to reuse this. From there, uh, you're going to have your pump out, but you need to snake the wiring out with it. That all comes out together. And you'll notice there is no O-ring on the pump. If the O-ring does not come out with the pump, that means it is right in there. So we want to make sure that we take that stock factory O-ring out. So I'm going to use just a real basic pick here. We're going to fish that stock o-ring out nothing too crazy we'll set that aside that will not be reused from there we're going to take the new fuel pump we're going to take our red cap off we're going to plug in our plug and play harness the side that looks like that is obviously the factory connector that goes in the top hat and the bigger wider one goes into the fuel pump only goes in one way so can't really get it wrong once that's plugged in we're going to take one of the two included o-rings the reason for the second o-ring is mainly just in case if you have an issue with getting this one in and it tears or something like that, although very uncommon, it gives you a second one just as a precaution. From there, we're going to take the factory pump spacer. That's going to slip right on, and then we're going to put the O-ring on, on top of that. So that is going to go in just like that. From there, we're going to put the wiring through. And then, same thing, we're going to line up our the outlet of the pump into that cavity where you pulled the O-ring out of. And these O-rings can fight you going in. So this O-ring is fighting me, so what I'm going to do is I've got a very small amount of oil. Uh, so with this o-ring you can lubricate it with o-ring lube ideally if you don't have o-ring lube uh, and you're in a pinch or at home whatever any engine oil is fine just you only need a small dab it does not take much so from there we're going to slide our pump in again and you'll feel it seat it'll slide right into place and then stop so this is seated i want to note that this pump is physically longer than the stock pump so it is not going to sit all the way up in there like the stock pump does that's perfectly okay this is normal this is how it is supposed to be 
Once that is done, we're going to take our red cap off the bottom of the pump. And this just pops right off. And we're going to install our fuel pump filter. Uh, note that there is this second hole. So this bigger one is, is where the fuel actually flows through. This uh, one that's kind of more in the middle is going to go on this locating post that's on the bottom of the pump. So we're going to install this. And it won't click or anything, it just kind of pushes on. Um, and you can give it some wiggling and tugs, and if that doesn't pull off, then you're good. So, from here, we're going to put our pump back into our basket. Also, definitely recommend cleaning out any sediment that is in the bottom of this bucket. Be surprised at how much accumulates in there. So with that done, so now we're going to drop our fuel pump assembly into the bucket. The thing that you need to be careful of here, because this fuel pump sock is obviously longer, there's this ledge that kind of goes along there. You can see my finger. And you want to make sure that the fuel pump is sock, the filter is not resting on that ledge. It will be very close, um, but you want to make sure that it's not resting on that ledge. So this will kind of fit up in between there. And just make sure that all three of the clips end up on the outside of the bucket. You can see kind of down in there that our fuel pump filter sock is not getting caught on anything. We'll make sure that our three clips are lined up and then we'll push down until they all visibly, audibly click into place. So that's all three of those. We're good to go. Everything is seated. And then from there, it's uh, basically the same as, as everything you did to, to get this apart. So we need to make sure that our hoses are lined up the way that they were before. And we want to make sure that we get these rods lined up with where they drop into place. And make sure that we reinstall our spring onto this one. And then we're going to push down and get our snap ring and push that back onto the rod. From there you can let up. And, oh actually, I got that wrong. I'll make sure that that hose on the outside of the rods so we're just gonna do that put our clip on and we're good to go from there we're just gonna reroute reroute our wires so this guy was here we had our secondary clip here And again, these top hat connectors only fit where they belong. So you can't plug them in the wrong spot. And take our new fuel pump wiring. 
we're gonna anchor it in the top here like the factory one was and then we're going to plug it in and we are all done so that is the new fuel pump all installed in the basket we're good to go and then you can go ahead and reinstall this back into your car the same way or the opposite way that you pulled it out and you are good to go so there you guys have it that is the entire install process to get our plug and play fuel pump set up into your basket assembly for your 10th or 11th generation honda civic if you have any questions around this product or any of our other products, feel free to send us an email at support at wonderladenracing.com or send us a message to either our Facebook or Instagram pages. We will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.